<laughs> All right, guys, let's let's get this thing started. Let's get this party started. Yeah. All right. Uh, first off, I, d I just want to say thank you guys all for being with us today. I I'm so genuinely excited to bring you guys all together for this special occasion. As I've told you all individually, huge fan of the films, um, not just the movie junkie, but also hip hop DJs, serious hip hop head, especially old school. So the breaking movies have always held a very special place in my heart, both classics in my humble opinion. Uh, so I'm excited to dig into them with you guys yeah. today with an emphasis on Electric Boogaloo. Uh, I yeah because I think that film has just become so unfairly maligned over the years. But I would love if we could go around and you can be as brief or as long as you want. And just tell me about sort of the moment that the break-in movies or break-in movie, in some of your cases, first came into your lives. At that point, I was on tour with Michael Boogaloo Shrimp and uh, Poppin' Taco. We were on a tour with Lionel Richie. I just finished choreographing the uh, All Night Long video. So I had a lot of, uh, credit behind me and in the lockers and all that stuff. But uh, again, uh, I, I met with them. I didn't really get uh, a, a chance to uh, choreograph the movie, but Menachem said to me once, he said, hey, uh, Shabadu. And I said, yeah, he said, uh, uh, can you act? And I said, I'm, I'm from Chicago. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. <laughs> he said, he said, uh, he said, all right, Shabadu from Chicago. <laughs> Go to, go to the casting and then let's see what they say. Shabadoo was the one that said we were the Jerry Lewis of hip hop. Actually, yeah, I was, I'm Dean Martin and he was Jerry Lewis. That's what it was. Of course, I was the, I was the tall, quiet, good looking guy. And I was the schmoolick. <laughs> he was the, the cute little funny one. Anyway, yeah, so, shut up, just do it. Anyway, anyway, so in the audition, when Shrimp and I auditioned, at one point, he hops into my arms. <laughs> And he's going, ah! And, doing this. and so they were like, they looked at us. They, 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 I remember them just looking at us. Like, what they thought I was on crack. Tripp and I brought an element of humor that they didn't expect. And so we just brought, we weren't actors. We just brought our world to the movie. And I literally went to the open call with the thousands of dancers in Los Angeles. And I got together with a friend. I didn't know really anything about break dancing. Um, I only knew, I had studied with Billy Goodson. And so I only knew kind of his style. And I made up this just ridiculous routine. I did a, a butt spin because I didn't know it wasn't like a break dance move. But I threw in aerials and flip-flops yeah. and a yeah. lot of gymnastics because I always had that in my back pocket. That yeah. was okay. one of the ways that I got quite a few jobs in Los Angeles in television commercials and whatever. And um, anyway, you know, Menachem already knew about me because obviously I was filming. He'd seen all the dailies and, uh, you know, when he saw, and I danced a little bit. I danced that evil ninja away. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they'd seen like a little, few of my moves, right? But I, I think that kind of sold them on it. And I just finished two action movies and I just worked with Lucinda and Menachem Golan approached me. Maybe it was under pressure or I don't know what. And he asked, he approached me with the question, can I take over uh, Breaking 2, the, the sequel of Breaking? And will I be able to do a uh, musical? Uh, you know, and I, I was, of course, a young director. What, what am I going to say? Of course, I will take it and I'll do it and no question. And, and the truth is, the way I approached it, the way I was thinking it, that there is not a huge difference between a dance movie and an action movie. It's a story with sequences of, uh, with numbers. Either the number is an action number or a dance number. I'm not a choreographer, neither this or that. You know, I don't choreograph action and I don't choreograph... Uh, uh, so, of course, th so that's how I took over. That's how I got involved. And I was just like, was, I didn't know anything about hip hop, anything about break dancing. I was so involved at that time with this action, with the, with the ninja movies. I, I didn't even know what's happening in the street. <laughs> uh, you know, thankfully, Billy Good, Good, Good Son and Shabadu, they took me, uh, you know, and they ushered me into this world and they showed me and they explained to me what we are talking about, what, mm -hmm. what the atmosphere should be. I did not uh, choreograph the numbers, they did, and, and my job was just cinematic. And I enjoyed it because I love music and I love dancing. And yes. I grew up with a 
with the classic Hollywood dance and, and song movies. So for me, it was a blast. It was fantastic. When I first met Lucinda Dickey, I was certainly not game for, for Lucinda Dickey to be that counterpart because I felt, well, why are they going to put a white person, you know, in our, in our world to say, to validate us? So I was, I was taken back by it and I resented it on many levels. But then when I got to meet Lucinda Dickey and I got to work with Lucinda Dickey and I got to see the success that we did together, I realized it was the best move that ever happened and I'm happy that it happened. Amen. At the end, at the end of the day, Lucinda Dickey brought an aspect to hip hop, to street yes. hip that, we, that wasn't afforded before. Yes. That it made, it made it so that everyone could do it and it was accessible to everyone. So yeah. then I, I began to appreciate her. And as I go around the world, I, I, I praise Lucinda Dickey's participation now because I believe that to be true in my heart of hearts. That, that without Lucinda Dickey, as, as cool as me and Shrimp were and all of that, we were yeah. cool. <laughs> we were we were cooler with Lucinda Dickey. And I was clueless. I remember like it was yesterday, the first day that I walked into the studio to meet Shabadoo and Shrimp. Oh, and wow. I was so intimidated and so terrified. I knew nothing. And it, we, oh my God, we rehearsed for hours and hours and days okay. and days for a very short period of time for them to try and teach me some of the moves, you know? <laughs> and I was bruised from head to toe. My hip bones were bruised from trying to do windmills and, you know, and it was, it was hard. There wasn't a lot of time before we were heavy into filming. And, mm -hmm. you know, the good thing about Breakin was that I was never supposed to really be that good. Like, oh, wow. I, I was learning it. And um, I mean, it was kind of a slow build. So it did give me a little bit of time. Yeah. I did truly feel like I had to try and survive in your world. Like besides the script and Kelly and yeah. Ozone and Turbo, like I- You I, yourself? You, you felt you I, had to? Absolutely, okay. absolutely I did. Yeah, because I, you guys were so powerful. Well, especially you, Shrimp was a kid. <laughs> yeah, surely <Shrimp. laughs> But, but, you know, aside from everything, we really, as hard as it was and as sweaty as we got and as sore as we got, and it was hot. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It was so hot when we filmed on those streets. And we didn't have deodorant. But we <laughs> did have some fun. Yeah. On yeah. and off the set. I mean, it, it, was, it was fun. And so when we were doing that part and I used to look back at that that those scenes in the movie I really commend you Lucinda because those techniques you know Shabadoo and I at different points you know in his career and my career we've taught techniques to other people but it just seems like you picked up those techniques like really really super fast and actually the fans around the world that commend you for inspiring them they always say you know what that girl, Lucinda Dickey, gave everything she got and she pulled it off. So thanks for showing everybody that at least if you're taught a certain style, you know, you, 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 you express it your way. But now in retrospect, I look, I look back and I think, God, you know, how, how brave she really was and how tough she really was. And if it was in reverse and I had to do ballet or do something that it wasn't outside of my wheelhouse, I don't know if I would have been able to rise to the occasion like she did. We got to talk about Michael's dance on the ceiling. Oh, uh, no. Michael, Michael and Sam, well, I'd love to hear from you guys both on, on how you captured that. So we're at the Cannes Film Festival. We're having dinner, and there's all these people, and there's all this. This is wild, man. I'm, I'm, I'm the 16-year-old kid at the Cannes Film Festival. I remember after Menachem, uh, something happened where Menachem and a and, uh, uh, and Joel, they had asked, so Shrimp, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to top uh, your broom dance? Menachem voice, Shrimp, you're doing this brooming in breaking. The film is doing wonderful. What will you do for part two to, to, 
to top the brooming, the dance. We need something just as brilliant. What can you do, shrimp? Shrimp, answer. Now I need question. How will you do better dance than the broom shrimp? So I'm like thinking, I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, I had just seen the film, The Thing, with John, John Carpenter's The mm -hmm. Thing with Kurt Russell. I was watching it in my hotel or on an airplane or whatever. It was just boring, but I watched, you know, the, I passed the time by watching the movie. So I looked and there was one scene in the movie where the alien shoots up the roof. And I said, bingo. I go, well, I could kind of like fall in love with a girl and go head over heels. Well, it makes sense because I had told them that, told them the movie. Somehow or another, they got the, the, the same uh, special effects thing called a gimbal to make the room turn. And matter of fact, years later, we found out, I found out that it was used in Fred Astaire's Royal Wedding. That gimbal, oh, that room. From Royal so the thing is, that, 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 that scene... Not only did I lose my equilibrium and it was a tough scene because it was grueling, but I was very honored that it was in the same consistency as the press write-ups for the first movie. In the, in the press write-ups of the first movie, I had actually had a few people say, this guy's doing a hip hop version of Fred Astaire when I did The Broom. That was the first film. But in part two, when I went up the ceiling, I had no idea the, of the correlation with Fred Astaire's Royal Wedding until later. So I was very honored that, you know, it was an MGM musical. Come on, man. And this is Hollywood greatness. I think I'll think about the revolving room because you're right. It's stolen from Royal Wedding. Absolutely. This is the same idea. <laughs> but we have, one, we came up with something brilliant. Yes. When, he, when shrimp is on the ceiling, Sabrina walks in. And this yes. was very, very difficult to, it wouldn't have no yes. blue screen, no, this yes. was actually physically done and he is upright and she is upside down, but it's, it's filmed the other it way. It was hip, it's really so, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I insisted on wide, long shot, no close up on the face, so the editor will not have a chance to cut this dance and only a couple of cuts, he's, he's moving from one level to the second level to the third level. And I kept it on long shots all the time to try to see his mastery dance without cutting into the legs or cutting into the face, which is really tricks. It was brilliant on your part. Thank you, Sam. My theory as, as a fan of both movies is that all, the reason why, and I, wanna, I would love to hear from you guys on this, that the film has taken its lumps over the years is that the, the title became kind of a punchline. It wasn't yeah, just, like, yeah, the movie had some 80s cheese elements. It was the 80s, they all did. It was a little bit different tonally from the first one. But how much do you guys think that, that the lumps the film has taken over the years dealt more with the title, Electric Boogaloo, than anything? I didn't particularly care for Breaking 2. Um, and I, and I know, for, I know, for, I know for all kinds of you. reasons. Not because I don't, I don't respect Schmulek and his ability, I felt that the storyline was going towards more of a cartoony point of view. And I think that that storyline was instigated not by Shmulek, but by Manasseh Golan, trying to, trying to recreate a 1940s musical in the golden age of musicals. Stop making dance movies like cartoon characters. We, can, we want the same things everyone else wants. To me, the kernel of the story that was the most compelling that I think that will be in, in, enduring for ages is the, is the community aspect, the cool. activist the activist aspect. We should have played that more, Shmulek, had they focused on that movie and said, well, that is the, that's the true dramaturg driving this, this, this film. And, and while it has some really good dancing, we would, have, we would have had the equivalent to West Side Story. Having said that, Again, now in retrospect, there's some cute stuff about it that I like. <laughs> Number one, I agree with you million percent. It's better to make West Side Story than Breaking to Electric Mugala. No question about it. I wish I was involved in a movie that would have risen to the level of West Side Story. Matter of fact, here is a bit of trivia. I wasn't supposed to do Breaking 2. I was actually fired in Cannes Film Festival. Really? Uh, yeah, for, for two yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. For two weeks, he told me he had already made the deal with, with uh, Lucinda Dickey. He had already made the deal with Boogaloo Shrimp. 
but I was the holdout. He, meanwhile, in LA, he was trying to recast Ozone. He had, uh -huh. he, 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 they searched, you know, far and wide. Everyone, Let's including their mama, auditioned for, right. for that. Ozone. They couldn't find him. And so then he had to come back and go, okay, <laughs> I'll state that right now, unequivocally, that the, that the lumps that the movies have taken were well deserved. Mm -hmm. But it is not the final analysis. It, it, you know, they were played cheap because we were making a cheap movie. I tell you what, man, I really respect the, the TV series, The Goldbergs, because they did, a, they did like a parody of Electric Boogaloo. Twilight, somebody online did like a parody of Twilight, uh, uh, Twilight because it was like, it's Kelly, Turbo, and Ozone as the Twilight people. So, and then I think there was like an, a reference, a, a, a reference in an animated film. I think it was Family Hotel Guy. Transylvania. So, Family Guy. Well, my, my point is this. My, my, my point is this. I am very flattered as cheesy as people have dumped on the storyline for people like Chris Rock and all these great people to make references, you know, from the movie. Even recently, the comedian Mike Epps. Mike Epps did There Ain't No Stopping Us. He did a parody of Breaking where he's Shabadoo teaching Lucinda. I mean, I mean, you know what? You know what? If anything, that's when, that's when you've arrived in Hollywood in some facet. And you know what? I tell you what. I, it's a blessing to be able to have Hollywood A-listers look at our film beyond the color, beyond the, the, the storyline, and say, you know what? That was a pretty good movie that reminded me of my 80s childhood. So on that premise, I think the nostalgia, the retro aspect of realism, we still have that audience, you know, the retro circa 80s, 90s people who said, you know what? These are the new wave, the funk, the hip hop, the locking, we love it all. You know, those people are still there and they're craving something new. Now, have you noticed that the beginning of La La Land is taken from our movie, Dancing on the tractor? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I want to say that most people who say, make statements like, oh, they're dumping on break and they do it. I don't think people dump on anything. I think they have their opinions. And I think the dumping that you may perceive or we may perceive is our, our, our feelings about what they may say about a film or that. So uh, people have all kinds of opinions, but I've never felt like anyone ever dumped on, nor have I ever dumped on the movie. It's just my opinion. Uh, but another person's opinion is just as valid. The, the film's taken some hard knocks critically throughout, but there are a lot of people that really like it, as I previously said in this meeting, but there's, he's passed away, but a very well-known film critic called Roger Ebert. I yes. don't know if you, you've read his review. No, I actually, um, um, I, we, I actually remember me and Shabadu had an interview with, with Roger. It's somewhere out there. If somebody could find it, it was uh, Cisco and Ebert when they both were doing their movie commentaries. We actually had an interview, and I remember Roger, Roger, you know, when he was, he was there um, interviewing us. You know, he was the, you know, he, I mean, he was the more objective personality. You know. Uh, the other, uh, the other guy, Mr. Cisco, he was more animated, but Roger was, you know, he was kind of like, he went a little further into the background of certain subjects. Right. And so it was, a, it was a very interesting interview. Well, I don't know if you can see that interview, but if you just Google uh, Roger Ebert film review, Electric Boogaloo. Kevin, let me read something here to you. Uh, you know, when the movie came out, it just, I, I, it's interesting. When the movie came out, there were a lot of critics. People hated it. People liked it. Writers liked it. Uh, some people didn't like it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I found out one review from the 80s. A guy, his name was Joe Boltek. He wrote that. And I will read one paragraph of what he wrote. It's a little bit exaggeration, but anyway. Okay. It's nice. Here is what he wrote. I have a hunch that when we talk about the great musical of the 80s, Break in Two will stand out in the same way that the Beatles, A Hard Day's Night, was standing for the 60s. One of the wonderful things about the Cannon group, when they decided to cast us, 
They cast us because we were the people of the streets. We came from those same streets. We filmed in the same streets. Shabadoo danced with the lockers at Maverick Flats, up and down Hollywood Boulevard, Saturday Night Live, all, Soul Train. All these people in the neighborhoods wanted to be like the lockers. I danced in East LA and Whittier, you know, and, and in the disco crowds and in, and in all these different other neighborhoods. One of the consistent things that I get from people from the so-called ghetto or the neighborhood is from Electric Boogaloo, the disenfranchised people from the impoverished neighborhoods, that movie they watch, not for the storyline, but they're like, yeah, you know what? I like the fact that Blacks and Hispanics and everybody who just wanted to dance could come together, you know, under the umbrella of music and at least hope. So on that merit, as much as people dump on the storyline for Electric Boogaloo, I look people in the eyes in East L.A. and Compton and in different, just different places where people didn't have, you know, that little Broadway stage thing the fact that we were shooting in the real place it was it was like exactly what you're saying it's a it was not in the studio we were not in a back lot we were not in a we were in east la yeah you know in boyle heights where it was really happening yeah. the people in the streets were the people <laughs> and you know and every day hundreds of hundreds of kids would show up every day to the set just to come and watch us and many Many tens of them participated. You know, I, mm -hmm. I didn't have the connection, but you guys had the connection to get. And every day, hundreds and hundreds of kids were surrounding us. Just come to watch this phenomena. What are we doing here? Of course, the movie Breaking was already out, so they knew about it. So we were in the location. We were there. When we are sitting on the hill and you are talking, and, and the scene that you are talking with them. Um, with the guy, with the, the, the guy who was teaching boxing, what was his name? Uh, uh, the oh, guy who played Byron? Byron. Oh, Byron. And he, was in, he was in that movie with Burt Reynolds. And, and, you see, and you see Los Angeles in the background over there far away, and I'm sitting behind the camera, and it, yeah. and, like this is the real thing. We're doing reality. We're yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was. It was. It was. That was reality, for sure. Yeah. Well, speaking of boxing, you guys got it. So Muhammad Ali came by the set. Sam, you sent us a photo of this. You guys got to tell us this story. It was Lucinda's parents' house, and this was Mary Pickford's house. Mm -hmm. Mary Pickford used to live in this house. Oh. So people shooting there. So we are shooting in this house, and apparently, and there were rumors that the next house, everybody was rumoring, next house is the house of Muhammad Ali. <laughs> One day we were sitting there and eating lunch, and he just shows up. He just comes to the set. But you guys were more involved with him than, than he than actually. Me, I was always busy with preparing. Yeah. He actually so he, invited he us over story. and <laughs> did a magic act. Do you guys remember that? I do remember. He made he did a magic stuff. act for us. He did like this whole levitation thing, and yeah. he had like three or four tricks that he did. <laughs> yeah. and okay, kids were all over the place, and it, it was just wild. This is this is what this is what I this is what I remember. I remember I remember we were getting ready to do our scene and the pole production just stopped and I looked and everybody's looking down that long driveway and they're like <gasps> and I'm like what's going on? They're like, dude, that's like the champ. Because you remember I didn't know. I was stuck on stupid back then. So look, so look, look, so so yeah, look, he's walking very slowly and everybody's just stopped animation, right? So when he gets to me and Sam and Shabadoo, Sh uh, I remember like it was yesterday. Sh Sh uh, Sam introduced him to, to he introduced Muhammad Ali to me and Shabadoo. Hey, Muhammad Ali, he gets right up to us, he goes, who what you all doing making all that noise? Making all that rap, because we were doing a crew for everything, right? He goes, what are y'all doing making all that noise? And Shabadoo goes, hey, uh, champ, he goes, we're doing a film and this is, he goes, I'm Shabadu. This is Boogaloo Shrimp. And Sam goes, yeah, this is a production. And then Muhammad Ali looks at Shabadu and goes, but ain't I the greatest? <laughs> he, goes, he didn't care if we were movie stars. He goes, but, but ain't I the greatest? They're like, yeah, yeah. We're like, yeah, you're the greatest. I remember that was crazy. After that, he would come every day, the, the, the three or yes. four days that we were filming in this house, in Mary Pickford's house, he yeah. would come every day, lunchtime. Christopher McDonald, how are you doing, sir? Hey, sir. I'm, I'm hey, well McDonald! <laughs> What's up? I've been watching you guys, but I can't hear what you. What are you doing, Chris? <laughs> yeah. what is there, there, is. Oh. <laughs> there is. There is. 
Yes. Yes. Hey, what is what is it? hey, Lucinda, you tell your boyfriend to come down here unless he's too scared to get mugged or raped. <laughs> <laughs> he remembers the lines. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's the line to be. Unless he's exactly. too afraid to get mugged or raped. <laughs> like, wow, you may help shape the film, everyone around the world. You may not know this, but there's a whole culture of hip hop dancers and people in hip hop culture that love you, that know you. They, they, they may not know all the other great films you made, but they know that one. And I tell you, they identify you as that guy. Well, thank you, first of all. Hi, Lucinda. How Hi, are how are you? I'm good, darling. Good to see you. And you haven't changed the bit. Right. I'm growing my quarantine beard, so I got that going for me. Tell us about your relationship with Breaking, like your 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 favorite memories from the, that 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 set. You know, Boogaloo Shrimp and Ozone, and 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 you know, it was it was great dancing, and it was explaining the idea of having a girl who's got all kinds of talents, can do classical and do great ballet, but she wants to street dance, and it was at the at the right moment, at the right time. So it basically, you know put a feather in everybody's cap because the thing was uh, just, just jumped off. It was one of their biggest hits. Came out in like, I think they, they edited it in like four weeks. <laughs> it was like, boom, done, wow. out there. Sam, I would have loved to work with you, sir, but I was doing something else at the time and could not uh, you know, join you in the sequel uh, mm -hmm. as much as I would love to. But, uh, uh, you know, it's just the way that the cookie uh, crumbles sometimes. So uh, congratulations on the second one, too, because that was badass. Yeah, Sam did a great sure. job. Everybody was really good. There's no doubt that these two movies made a huge impact Absolutely. on the dance world and in the movie world. And God bless us, man. We'd be grateful that we're all part of one of them yeah. or two of them like you guys are. And uh, I got to tell you, from a personal experience, I've had so many fans reach out from, from that movie. And uh, so I'm, I'm extremely grateful to be in your company, mm -hmm. all of you. Maybe because it did not have Mr. Christopher McDowell in it, um, but was there? It, but it was still beloved. Was there ever talk of doing a, a part three? Yes. Yes. How close Let's did that? How, how close did that come to reality? It, it's this close. Yeah. And then it went away just like that. Oh no 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 no! It's still there. It's still there. I don't want any spoilers out there, but certainly I've been in negotiations with people that can help make the movie. But again. Yeah. Uh, it may it may take some different turns than we than we expect, but I think they're, they're organic turns. So I got my window down. So the natural progressions great. of our characters. I've always I've always the people <laughs> who are sitting on this uh, phone right now in this conference right now are all the ones that I wanted in the movie, uh, and but in, in a different way and in more in an organic way. And I think that the storyline. I think that without getting any spoilers, I want to say this. I'll make this statement. In today's world, the king of street dance should be a woman, first of all. And that the second of all, we're living in a Me Too movement. So just like our day, we had our sort of culture and our sort of things that we were dealing with uh, in, in society. I think we're dealing with those same sorts of issues today. And I think today there's a, there's a new story to be told using dance in a very powerful way. Mm -hmm. Now, that, are we going to go dancing down Los Angeles uh, downtown? No, it, I don't think so. But will it be great dancing? Yes. But it should have more of depth to story than it did in, in the ratio that it did in previous films. So with that being said, the character, the, the, the soul, the spirit of the movie has to be told through our, our life experiences after the point. And what, and what kind of hope can we instill with young people today? And it can't just be about win the contest. Life is much more precious than that. It's, it's much more deeper than that. And we have to, the, our central character has to have the qualities and quests that, that not only street dancers will get behind and our fan base will get behind, but people will get behind because it will raise the, the human consciousness. Well and said. Yeah. So in any case, we're, so they're, they're excited. The people I'm working with now are, are very excited about the idea. Uh, and, and again, we, we, you know, I just want to make this statement. We're guys, no matter how we, th we, we're never going to be those guys that we were before, but we can be something much greater today. And so what we are today and being the spiritual chieftains that we are of the movement should be given in that way. The characters need to be uh, used in that way. So uh, having said that, they, they like the, the storyline and the direction that, that I have proposed. 
and hopefully, God willing, and again, I don't just believe in luck. You have to put your, you know, pencil to paper and you have to be tough and you have to, you know, fight for the kind of movie that we deserve and that this culture deserves, a maturity. So in any case, hopefully in the very near future, you will hear from, from me and from uh, financiers or pre people and come on board and let's not recapture what we did before. Let's do something much greater. Oh, man, oh, man. I love that. Kevin, and, and, and I, by the way, uh, since you did say everybody on this call you want in the movie, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that. If we were ever to to do a new version of this franchise or whatever, I think that right now the tone of the world where everybody's kind of sad and everybody's kind of like you know segregated and this is not one thing that we always have is we all move to the same beat, and that's the beat of humanity. And you know what? It, it, just like you're lying, short hair nowhere. What do they want? The thing is. It didn't matter if you were black or white or whatever. It just didn't matter how much respect and love you have for your fellow man. So that's what we all stand for. And that's, that's where we're at at this point, in, you know, in our lives and in the franchise, you know, uh, I think the fans, they've been craving for us to speak on it and actually fill in all those missing links of, of translation that were never on any blog. But now that we're all together again, this new generation of dancers and people who want to feel good again, they need something to feel good about. And so hopefully we can, we can do something in the near future and give these, these kids in the dance community some more hope like we did when we saved miracles. We have one yeah. last special guest who just called. You may not recognize him. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I've already kept you as lo longer than the length of the breaking movies, so I, I, I got to let you guys go eventually. Uh, but as you know, I'm not the only mega breaking fan out there, so we figured we would close the call uh, by inviting one one breaking super fan to just join and say hello to you guys. His name is Eric Rivera. This is a total surprise to him. He had no idea he was about to join a Zoom call with you guys. Um, Eric, you probably recognize everybody on the call, but you got Shabadoo, you got Lucinda, you got Bugalo Shrimp, you have Breaking One Scene Stealer Christopher McDonald, you have Breaking Two Director <laughs> Sam Furstenberg, and you have Breaking Two Editor Marcus Manton. Uh, Eric, say hello. And choose your Hi, words wisely. Hello, OGs. Choose your Eric. words wisely. Oh, man. Y'all the generals in my book. Well, you know, just, you this, got, you this, got, is, got this is a surprise. I thought I was just doing an interview, and then all of a sudden I see you guys. I'm like, wow. You got to love a man sitting there with your, with your face on his chest. <laughs> you know, I don't you know. know I, I, had to, I had to rep right. You know how it is. Okay, wow. I, okay, I'm going to throw this out there, but your mama raised you right. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I see absolutely. that. I see the fruits of her labor. It's written yes, all over <laughs> Yes, you know indeed. What I my, thought? my collection's getting pretty thick, too. I thought they were going to, Kevin, I thought you were going to bring on John claude Van Damme. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Looks like the scene under the bridge. Yes, yes, indeed it is. Right. Yeah. Well, it it absolutely is. I actually, um, about maybe eight, nine years ago, they had uh, part two on Netflix. And oh. I, uh, I had a group of friends in my house, and I, I didn't realize until that I was looking. I was like, oh, I was like, let's watch this. Yeah. And, I'll, and lo and behold, I had a friend of mine text or email me a link of like all of the scenes and where they were at in East LA. So literally, like the next morning, like eight, nine in the morning, I went down there and like, took photos yeah. of miracles of yeah. like the bridge scene yeah. and the street yeah. and like everything dude I like hey those locations eric man. eric those locations they they mean so much to international fans before the covid-19 yeah. people would come into los angeles and say look you know what if you have the time i'd love to just take a photo op with you but i i actually was at santa monica pier before covid 19 shutdown and i ran into flea from the red hot chili peppers oh, and the well. first thing that he the first thing he brought up was that he remembered Electric Boogaloo, right? Yeah. I said, you know what? It would have been the coolest thing if they had that scene under the bridge for the song. Sometimes I feel like <laughs> don't have a part. No, because the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers have a song under uh, the bridge. And yeah. so we were just talking about it. I, I got a classic picture with Fleet, but it's just beautiful to know how many A-listers, like, you know, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of A-listers in Christopher McDonald's uh you know, line up. I mean, after he's put in time, you know, in, in film time after the films, um, you know, and he went on to be who he is. All those people, like I heard Leonardo DiCaprio was like a big fan of breaking. And, and when I saw Wolf of Wall Street, Leo was doing his moves and busting, you know, and popping. And I heard Cameron Diaz. I heard like a lot of A-listers from the 80s. Yeah. They, you know, they, 
they they made electric blue and breaking a part of their lives and so it would be really 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 cool to see if this new movie happens to have like the expendables of dance with cameos by like all these people who, who did a little popping and boogaloo oh, wow. or something you know that'd be cool michael i want to tell you an anecdote yes years later many years later after we made the movie i you know most of the movies i directed were action movies and comes up to the set iced tea at a little part years later Tracy. 20 years later after he comes to me yeah. i said uh, iced tea do you remember me you know breaking it yeah you <laughs> made me sing the only one song that i regret for my entire career <laughs> i love every song that i ever did but there was one song i hated and i regretted it was in the ending in the ending of the oh! electric Google. he's on the stage and he has some kind of a rap about break uh, breaking electric Google. he said i hate this song and it's all because of you. I didn't want to do it, but... I think, I think Ice-T was saying he's madly in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam, don't feel bad because... Don't feel bad because years later, I ran into Ice-T on the set of a very serious music video. And he was already, you know, you know, the syndicate. He was already, you know, the, 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 the thug persona, right? Yeah. So I got up to him and I said, Hey, how you doing, Tracy? Because that's his real name. I go, hey, Tracy, what's up? He goes, yo, shrimp, excuse me, bro. Don't be saying my name. Just say I'm ice. He got real serious because how can you be tough with a name like, wait, how can you be tough with a name like Tracy? <laughs> he, goes, he goes, wait, 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 wait. I go, I go, ice. I go, I go, hey, Tracy, how you doing? He goes, yo, shrimp, excuse me. Hey, chill out, chill out. Don't call me Tracy. Just say I. It's all right. I was like, wow. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's a you pretty. Decent, at me. That's a pretty decent impersonation. Um, so I was just thinking that. You're good. Oh, you almost got that voice on point. Yo, uh -huh. I am a nightmare walking, psychopath talking, king of my jungle, just a gangster walking, colors, colors. Yeah. All right, everybody. It's breaking in its electric Let me blue kick my potential. <laughs> chickity, chickity talk, chickity talk, hey, yeah. Uh, okay, Let me kick uh, my credentials. Uh, a young player playing South Central LA, the home of the place. body bag. You wanna South. die where the wrong color rag. Yeah. Hey, um, that was great. Good. 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 This has been absolutely oh, amazing. All the ones and twos with Yahoo and Kevin Paul away. Yeah. I've loved it. I've loved every moment of this. I, I so appreciate all you guys calling yeah. in right now. Thanks, uh, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you that so much. I would great to celebrate the legacy of the breaking movies with you all. Eric, thanks for coming in. Hope My personal this. thank you for this. Chris, this has been incredible. Good to see you guys. Thank you guys. Thanks. Great to see you, Lucinda.